Hey everybody, welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Slime Fun with Boomer, your host. So today our goal is to take you through the cargo networks, how the input and output nodes work, and how that ties in with having power within your network. So to begin with, let's look at the basic setup. We have our Carbonado solar generator. We did have to punch a hole in the sky for it to get access to power up our regulator. For any electric power network, you have to have a power source, obviously, but also only one regulator. Don't put two on the network. You only need one. Same thing with a cargo network. You only want one cargo manager. If you put on two, it's going to warn you that there's a problem. Uh, don't expect everything to run hunky-dory if you do. Now, let's talk about the cargo manager briefly. This little baby will transmit a signal six blocks horizontally 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 vertically left right forward backward up down it doesn't do a radius it's in those directions only meaning i can attach an input or output node in that straight line going this way or going that way or going up all tied in so that the nodes attach to this straight line that it's going to create if I want to extend more than six blocks out, I have to put a cargo node connector in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if this is a last, let's say, for example, ore grinder where I'm going to send cobble, I'm fine. But if I want to extend my network beyond that, then I have to put another cargo node down. And you can see it is connected. If I had instead of placed it, oh, let me back up a little bit, there and not place down that one, okay? If I click on it, it's not connected. So you've got to have your nodes six blocks apart and then you can place anything in between. Now, I did mention that power will actually go seven. So if I had another capacitor, I could put it here, but the data nodes can't go beyond here. It doesn't make much sense to do that because then you can't put a machine there and you waste one space for your ore grinder or gold pan, whatever you're doing. So instead of every six spots, I would do connector, capacitor, connector. That way it's nice and clean. It's the maximum efficiency you can get. Same thing if you're going vertically. After five machines, the sixth one is a capacitor and then two data node connectors on the end. So let's set this up and how this works. We're going to go ahead and place our cobble gen down, get it going. So you'll see cobble gen only has one output spot. Now it's going to be key and we'll talk about that in a little bit. We're going to have it output to two different chests. But to start with, let's talk about the input node. Input means input items from a storage container into the cargo network. Whereas previously, where I had the cobble sun gen, you saw it was an output duct. That's outputting it into an item. Same thing here. You're going to input it from an item into the network, and then you're going to output it from the network into a storage container. You need to place it against the item that you're going to push or pull items in and out of. You can't just place it on a floor. It's got to be placed onto a chest or a machine. If we right click on the input node, this is where items will go that you are either going to allow or stop from going through by using what's known as a whitelist or a blacklist. Now, I apologize if everybody on this video knows what a white and blacklist is, but I don't want to assume. Whitelist says you can only let these items through if you put anything in here. If you don't put anything in, nothing will come through. If you turn it to blacklist, you're saying anything can come through except whatever you put into this spot. So, for example, if I I'm doing just a cobble gen here and just the two chest storages. I could whitelist cobble because it's coming from a cobble gen, or I could blacklist everything coming out of the cobble gen to go into the two chests. Okay. So right now it's not going because there's no nothing else to set up. These are still on whitelist, and we're whitelisting nothing. So if I set this up to black, let's start with this. If I set to whitelist cobble only, and then I come over here and I say whitelist cobble, you'll see it moved it pretty quick. And now it's moving it as fast as a cobble gen creates it. The other way to do this would be to blacklist nothing. 
it's still moving even though this is on a whitelist cobble so you could blacklist nothing out of here and let's say if it made cobble and stone i could set one of these to cobble one to stone now i will never recommend blacklist everything on this channel and we'll talk about the channels in a minute because if you're having problems and the wrong items are going to the wrong spot if you've blacklisted nothing you don't know what's supposed to be going through so I will always set these up with a whitelist of what I want to come out. Same thing with going in. I will always set it up with a whitelist of what should be coming in. That way, if I start seeing something else that's in here that shouldn't be, that tells me there's a bug at Slime Fun that's got to be reported. And I'll make a video and shoot it up to the devs. Or I've got something else going on that I didn't set right. 99.99999, 100% of the time, when you see something in a chest that shouldn't be there, it's because you configured an input or output node wrong. Now, as far as the channels are concerned, you have 17 channels on the network. And they are all the different 16 colors of wool. And then when you get to channel 17, anything on channel 17 can be accessed by a cargo terminal. Meaning, for example, you know, all those little things that you really don't want to set up a chest room storage facility for because you don't have a whole ton of them. Let's say you put together 200 chests of those kind of things and you put them all on channel 17 and you access it with a CT terminal. You'll be able to see everything inside of that network as long as it's all connected on one cargo manager. And you can put in an item items in and out of that in and out of that simply by putting it into one chest and then it will be sent to the appropriate facility in that storage network. If you leave them all as a blacklist anything, well, then it'll just find a first available slot. So if you click on the item chest, it'll be a mess, but the network will know where everything is and you'll be able to pull them out through the network. Or you can assign a chest to each one and it'll automatically put it in there. And then you can open up the chest and see what's in there and have it nice and neat, which is probably the way I'll do it. But then I don't have to get 200 item frames and label them all. I can get access to everything from one chest or one barrel or one storage facility item. But that only works if everything is set to channel 17. Now on the input node, let's also talk about round robin. A lot of people misunderstand round robin. Round robin means equally distribute items on a channel. But here's where people don't understand it. When you turn on round robin, then they're thinking that while well, the first item that gets produced goes out to one, if this were ore grinders, it goes to one ore grinder, then the second item that gets produced goes to the second, the third, and so on. That only works when an item only has one output slot, such as this basic cobble gen. If I had 16 cobble gens putting everything into a chest and then an input node pulling it from the chest to the ore grinders, that will never happen and here's why let's assume for a second this chest is my storage facility where the input node is pulling items an input node will pull from the first slot it'll take this out send it to ore grinder number one before this starts to fill up again it's going to look at slot number two send it to ore grinder number two now that's great the very first time in this in this particular situation it was balanced remember it's always going to look at slot one first is it empty yes go to slot two is it empty yes and it keeps going until it finds items the moment it detects items in slot one it pulls slot one items then it goes to slot two if there was nothing in two then it would go to slot three so it pulled slot three now it detects items in slot one then it pulls slot one. You see how this works? Round robin isn't by the number of items, it's by the available slots in the facility or storage unit that it's pulling from. So unless every single slot has the exact same every single moment, every single second of the game, it will never pull the identical number of items to go to each ore grinder, go pan, whatever the item happens to be. Now in this case, because our cobble generator only has one output slot by using Ron Robin it will be perfectly balanced so you'll see the speed the speed that it's going here this one's going at the same speed if I turn off Ron Robin this one will double the speed 
and it will go until this fills up. So if this were an ore grinder, it would go until there were 128 cobblestone in it. Then it would start sending cobble to the second one. The moment there's one spot available here, it will send another cobble back here, and then it'll keep going until that ore grinder gets through it. So in other words, if you're running 15 ore grinders, don't ever expect the top five or six or seven to ever get cobble. So in this case, you have to use Ron Robin if you want to evenly distribute it through all of your ore grinders. Now, our initial setup will probably be four level one ore grinders. One cobble generator will be fine. But eventually, we're going to have to upgrade the cobble gens because we're going to upgrade the ore grinders and we're not going to run four. To give you an idea on the ratio on that, just real quick, four ore grinders to two go pants done one, to one dust washer is the basic formula that you'll use for building a dust network. And we'll talk more about that as we get a little bit closer and what happens when you expand beyond the basic 421. So that's kind of it. The only other thing that's in here is lore. I never really turn this on or off. I just leave it alone because none of the items that I sort have lore that I need to check. Uh, if you were using something like Items Adder and you wanted to sort uh, the magical swords that come in it, in that case, I would turn lore on. Yeah. But if I wanted to include those that have different names, then I need to turn lore off and just get the swords, even if I name them all different. If one's Fluffy, one's Excalibur, one's I'm going to kill uh, Shrek, I, whatever. You know, I'm going to get the dragon. Uh, by having lore on, it will only let that one sword in. So in a, net, in a nutshell, that's kind of the network and how everything is, works. Um, the only thing I didn't talk about was the regular cargo node. This is an advanced. The advanced has the ability to white and blacklist items. The regular cargo output node does not. So you will not see the white or blacklist option. You will not see this. You will just see the channels. So if all I were doing were going from the cobblestone gen into, let's say, an infinite barrel, and the only channel I was going to use is channel one for cobble, and I'm not going to use channel one for anything else in my network, ever, ever, then I could do that. I personally always recommend, will always, even though it's much more expensive to build, will always recommend using the white blacklist, the advanced output node. Because when you first place an output node down, it by default is on channel one. If you've already set up your input node, anything on channel one coming in is fair game to go into your private channel that you don't want anything else into. So one way around that would always place your output node down first, set that to the channel, then place your input node down, then set it to the channel, then whitelist or blacklist set that up that way nothing is going to go into that channel one but if you place the input node down first on channel one and then you were to place the output no or input down on channel one you already have a channel one being received the moment you hit blacklist that's going to start pulling immediately so place that input node down don't put anything in the spots leave it on whitelist change the channel then put the items in and you'll be okay all right so with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm stuck back here, but that's okay. We'll just do that. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Again, I thank you for the last episode feedback. I know somebody had mentioned the video was a little choppy. Hopefully we fix that now. And I'm going to get this up for you guys. But as always, when you're playing Minecraft, you got to go boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later.